Hey guys, I'm here in beautiful Hawaii where I went hands-on with the world's most powerful Android smartphone. To give you an idea, Qualcomm launched the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 flagship chipset. So let's talk about it. So this is the prototype device that has the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. And this is the new 8 Gen 2 chipset that will be powering a lot of upcoming Android flagships that we'll see at the end of the year and also next year. Now the new 8 Gen 2 chipset brings a lot of new advancements and cool features, but I know you want to know the specs first up. Let me show you that. So this is based on the 4 nanometer architecture and like 8 plus gen 1 this is using TSMC's more efficient 4 nanometer node. Anyway the prime heavyweight core is the more powerful Cortex X3 and it hits almost 3.2 gigahertz but what's more interesting is that the 8 gen 2 uses 4 performance cores instead of 3 in the previous gen chipsets. There's a new Cortex A715 with a higher clock speed and better power efficiency than A710. The efficiency cores remain the same A510 but they are clocked higher and are now 3 instead of 4. Now this new cryo CPU setup is set to be 35% faster than 8 Gen 1 and 40% more power efficient which is nice although not a massive difference compared to 8 plus Gen 1 but yeah still nice. The GPU is the new Adreno 740 GPU which is set to be 25% faster and also more power efficient and what's exciting is that it supports real time hardware accelerated ray tracing for better lighting and more realistic reflection effects in games. Yeah, ray tracing is here on phones. Qualcomm showed off this demo with RTX off and turned on and you can see the difference in the lighting and the reflections. They also showed off some games that will be launching with ray tracing support and yeah, it looks cool. Apart from this, the Adreno 740 also has support for the new Unreal Engine 5 and the MetaHuman framework. I mean, the CPU and GPU improvements in 8 Gen 2 look promising and when compared to 8 Gen 1, it seems like a pretty good upgrade. Faster cores, one more performance score, better GPU, and there's more. I also like the fact that the new 8 Gen 2 supports the latest UFS 4.0 storage, which brings a huge bump in speeds as you can see, while using 46% less power. There's also support for fast LPDDR5X RAM. To give an idea, the 8 Gen 1 had support for LPDDR5 RAM, which speeds up to 3200 MHz, while LPDDR5X brings speeds up to 4200 MHz. 8 Gen 2 also has the new 5G modem with support for dual same 5G support and it also has the new Wi-Fi 7 standard with peak speeds of 5.6 Gbps compared to 3.6 Gbps in 8 Gen 1. I know even Wi-Fi 6 is in its early stages in India, almost non-existent and now Wi-Fi 7 is here so yeah, good luck to us. Anyway, the 8 Gen 2 also holds its own against the Dimensity 9200. They are kind of similar chipsets but the 8 Gen 2 has higher clocked prime core, more performance cores, higher clocked efficiency cores. So yeah, the 8 Gen 2 should score higher in benchmarks and it kind of does. I mean, here are the leaked Geekbench scores of the 8 Gen 2 and the Dimensity 9200 side by side. And in this, the 8 Gen 2 definitely blows away the Dimensity 9200. It's clear that the new OnePlus 4 Plus 3 architecture will bring an advantage to 8 Gen 2. Having said that, I will reserve my final judgment after I've done the benchmarks myself on a final retail unit because added the scores of the 9200 seem really good too. Anyway, the specs are good and while we're not allowed to use benchmarks on the reference 8 Gen 2 device, it did seem fast and responsive like you'd expect on the flagship phone. Now coming to 8 Gen 2 features, the updated Spectra ISP is optimized for the new DOL HDR Sony sensors, including the new 1-inch IMX sensor. It is also optimized for the new 200 megapixel Samsung HP3 sensor, which will probably be used in the S23 series. And it will support all its modes, including a 200 megapixel mode, as well as 50 megapixel and usual 12 megapixel binning capture modes. Agent 2 also has a new cognitive ISP, which basically detects things like the face, sky, skin tone, hair, etc., all individually, and then optimizes them individually for better photos. And this works in real time. I mean, this looks like it's actually doing a good job, although yeah, it will be up to manufacturers to actually implement this in their phones. I mean, it can even remove glare on the glasses, which is pretty good. One interesting thing to note here is that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is the first Snapdragon chipset to support hardware-based AV1 decoding, which is something a lot of people have been wanting since a long, long time. Apart from AV1 support, phones with 8 Gen 2 will also play 8K HDR videos at 60 FPS, so that is awesome. The new Snapdragon flagship processor also has an updated hexagon processor which is 4.3 times faster. There's also a new AI engine that makes real-time multi-language translation faster and it's pretty cool. This demo shows English being converted to Spanish and Chinese in real-time as we speak and actually seems to work well. The sensing hub is also improved with dual AI processors for the first time and this can enable useful features like the phone automatically detecting a QR code or notifications hiding automatically when the camera detects someone else peeping at your phone. And yeah, it actually seems to work well. 
There are also cool audio features as part of Snapdragon Sound. 8 Gen 2 has support for dynamic spatial audio and head tracking games, calls, music. But you'll need a compatible Snapdragon Sound earbuds for this. Bose has announced an update to enable this for their quiet comfort to earbuds, so we can expect more makers to support this. See, all of these features are good, but what really matters is that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 flagship chipset is bringing more power, better gaming, while promising better efficiency, and that's very important. I mean, look, 8 Gen 1 had crazy throttling and battery drain issues, and 8 Plus Gen 1 fixed that. And now with the 8 Gen 2, I'm hoping things are even better, more smoothened out. The specs and features are definitely exciting in 8 Gen 2, so yeah, I can't wait to test out a flagship phone with 8 Gen 2, and also Dimensity 9200 to see which flagship Android chipset is actually better, and which of them can actually take on the Apple A16 Bionic. Yeah, things are gonna get interesting. I wanna know your thoughts on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, Dimensity 9200 versus the 8 Gen 2. Which one will you prefer more? Comment down below. Also give this video a like. If you enjoyed it, make sure to share it and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That's me signing off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Chipset. If you use Chrome, you need these three super useful extensions. Trust me. Picture in picture. There are times when you want to keep watching.